What's up you guys, FSC Truck Shop. This should be the last video of the teardown, hopefully, of my 12V71 Detroit diesel right here. This engine was built way back in 1978, rather I should say rebuilt back in 1978. And for the last handful of videos, what I've been trying to do is break it down to bare blocks so I can send it out to the machine shop and see if I have a usable block or a big pile of parts right here behind me and other places scattered throughout. Now this block is questionable because there was a crack in the side here. However, it doesn't look like it's in an important area. I don't know if there's a previous fix to it or not. Either way, I do want to send it to the machine shop to get it looked at, repaired properly, welded, whatever has to be done to it so we can start the rebuild process on this engine and then figure out what kind of truck we're going to put this in. Now with that being said, I will mention to you guys, if you guys know of a truck preferably a cab over or an older obviously conventional something different than your typical 379 359 peter builds uh, the thought is if you guys know of any for sale or want to sell me one or make a deal i'm not looking for a real expensive truck um i, I know we live in a day of eld and everything pre-eld they think that I mean, I literally see trucks on Marketplace, four or five years old, 400,000 miles, and people think you get $218,000. You're smoking crack. But I'm not willing to pay a whole boatload of money for a truck, but if anybody has a truck, preferably Detroit powered, with either a 6V71 or an 8V71, or even a Monster 12V71, let me know, hit me up in an email, festjackshop at gmail.com. That's where you guys get a hold of me if you guys know of or want to sell me a truck to put this engine in, preferably something already Detroit powered so the plumbing is already accurate and done and set up good for me. With that, the goal of today basically is merely to get the crankshaft out of this thing. I'm not even going to attempt to flip this thing over. I don't know what a bare block weighs, but I know it weighs a lot. So the game plan is we're going to unbolt the crank from underneath and then with straps going through the cylinders set the crank down on the floor underneath this homemade stand that I had made where it's bolted to a, where a Detroit engine stand would bolt it from the side. I mentioned in previous video those type engine stands don't rotate it along its crank axis. It rotates along this axis here so it would roll it this way or not. But you're talking a lot of money for an engine stand like that. I might be able to use my automotive rotisserie for something like that but I don't know. I think it'd be a little tall. Automotive rotisserie is about this high, and I don't know if I like that kind of weight this high up. To be honest, even this is a little high, but I need the room to lower it down. So that's what we're going to do. If you're just finding my video now on this one, there are other videos in the past, obviously, where we took the front cover off, the rear bell housing off, the heads, the blowers, the whole bit, right? So go ahead and look back on the older videos if you're curious on how we got this far. But to be honest, Compared to like small block Chevys that we're usually building or, or even big blocks around here, this thing is a monster. So, all right guys, with that, let's go ahead and get this video started. My basic plan here is to start loosening all the caps that hold the crank up to the block and leave two of them in place. Then I'll bring a cherry picker. At that point, I'll bring a cherry picker up forward and set my straps to go ahead and lower the crank down to the floor. But right now, we got to see what size and what I need to take them off. They appear to be three quarter inch. The problem I'm going to run into is the rear two have like these weird brackets to them. And the bolts that go through the bracket, through the caps, this is kind of basically a two bolt main. If you're familiar with like Fords and Chevys and Mopars and so on. These are two bolt mains. They're all three quarter inch. However, the back two are 12 points. And I don't have a three quarter inch 12 point socket. So... We're going to use that handmade tool and a three quarter inch wrench and that should do provided they're not overly tight so with that i'm gonna go ahead and get started i got the gopro shining up down on the bottom i got the light shining up that way i can see what i'm doing Braid and oil. Come on all the way out. 
There's an old joke revolving around Detroit diesels. You know what's going on with Detroit when it stops leaking oil, right? It's empty. But no, even empty, they still drip some oil. Give them a little schmutz. jiggle. I want to see if they're marked. I don't see any markings on them, but I do want to mark it once we take them out. So I'm going to be mindful of the direction they come out. There's your bearing, your main cap. I'm going to set it on the ground as it came out of the engine. That way it's forward. Set it on top of the engine so you guys can see. That's how it came out, right like that. I want to mark them. That bearing has seen better days. But that doesn't mean it's destroyed. Let's check her markings. Part number and nothing to notate what was forward or back. Four, all right there. Label four, like that's how it was. So this is the front. So I am going to add a letter to that. It is in fact, one, two, three, four. It is in fact number four. Okay, so the original builder stamped it, and I'm gonna label it front. So I have a little stamper with an F on it. I have the whole alphabet and a handful of other things. Despite the fact it went flying, it's stamped with a nice F. And again on that side. Alrighty, so now that's properly labeled. Now that it's labeled, I'll show it to you close up. There's your bearing. There's my F and there's the four. So it sat in there like so. One main cap. And bearing. Yeah. The last two got that weird funky bracket. We'll bust that loose. There's this bracing bracket here. Hooks to the block in two places on this side and one on this side. This is the rear of the engine. So we'll spin them loose.
two on what would be the right side of the engine, and one on what would be the left side of the engine. I mean, me forgot I did have a 12.3 quarter inch. I think I needed it for a caterpillar. But now I have it. The spacer is part of the bracket, it's not part of the bolt. And this one is not want to come out. There you go. That bracket is two holes for the support and the other has only one. Apparently that does make a difference. Five, six, seven is the back one. Again, same process. Well, I think the back is the thrust. Might not be. Truth, I have no idea. carefully simply rotate it it's labeled seven front is not labeled we will label it This is the thrust bearing. You see here, that's the wear side of the shell for the thrust. That's the crank's back and forthness thrust. Basic idea is to run these straps down the cylinder around the journal so it won't be uh, strap won't score up the journal although I have a feeling these are going to have to be machined to be undersized or rather oversized rod bearings possibly main bearings let's we'll see what the machine shop says Craig cylinders that way your crank will set down more straight like so that's the idea
Matt went home to get changed. So he got back from working out. He'll be back here shortly. Help me out with this. Would be nice. Keep the same with this strap. Through one hole. And up the next. Out with this quick? Oh, sure. Of course. Okay. I'll do that then. Of course he will. He just got back oh, from working gonna... out. Ditch the lanyard. Sweet. Okay. What I did, Matt, is I took most of the uh, uh, main bearings out or yeah. caps out. You'll see I have them only by the two in the middle. Look underneath. You'll see. It's a GoPro running under there too. Okay. So the idea is, now the crank is supported from the top, I can now take the caps off and set the crank down gently. Makes sense. Yeah. Do you want me to go do the truck now or help you out with this? Oh, yeah, 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 sorry. We're actually trying to do two films today, so Matt's going to go rehook the batteries to Orwell. That's um, the next video. All right, so now, you should be able to take the last two off and have no issues. Rotating front to back. Does now. Realize I made a slight error. Done. Done already. All hooked up. Yes. Wow, took just you the, just the two. Took you 30 minutes the first time and five minutes the second. Well, because I know yeah. what you're doing. Exactly. took this one out even though I did take bolts out this is cap six
now all that's left is cat seven and then the crank should gently come down from the block Ooh, <laughs> I said gently. Hear that crank sing? There it goes. Yes. She's dangling. Understood. It's cap five. I'm stamping the caps. Yeah because they're not labeled forward or backwards. So I can put them in exactly as they came out. Okay. For when the block goes to the machine shop, it need to be line board, most likely. That makes sense. All right, you want to get on the cherry picker for me? Yes, I can. Crank's loose, so just gently set down. That's a good speed. Yep, keep going down. That's okay. It's going to roll because it's changes angle. It's going to go right to the ground, nice and gently. Oh, I'm trying to keep it away from the GoPro. Where's the, oh, set it down. I didn't see the GoPro, sorry. Okay, it's on the ground. Bring the cherry picker down about four inches. Good. One more, a little more. Excellent. Slide cherry picker out. Now, is that for taking a crank out of a truck engine, goops? That's not hard. That's not bad. A little bit of thought process in the in the pro, in the thing here, huh? Yeah. Oh yeah. There it is.